and welcome back to What the Flick Reviews, The Walking Dead. If you are looking for answers from last week's cliffhanger, you will not find them because this was an extra long episode focusing on Morgan, episode four, Here's Not Here. And I had a hard time understanding exactly what Morgan's credo meant, but these fine gentlemen explained it to me. This fine gentleman. I just One agreed. of them did. I just agreed with what he was saying. Let's rehash that again. I yeah. Yeah, from what I understand, here's not here. I mean, uh, we have the benefit of having a forensic psychologist as a character in this episode, so he explains Morgan's PTSD, his disassociative break, his rage issues from being trapped in that moment where his wife and child are dead in mm -hmm. front of him. And for whatever reason, we don't get a whole lot of details into how his son dies, but we know we see his wife in the second episode. Yeah. Um, so here's not here is sort of like he's living in that moment again and again and again. He's trapped there. He can't get out the door. Yes, he's here in the room with you, but in actuality, he's back watching his son die, watching his wife die, trapped in those moments. Mm -hmm. Here, but not here. I really, I thought I, I liked the, this episode more than I thought I would. Uh, mm -hmm. It was long, uh, but it made me appreciate Morgan's actions earlier that we saw in uh, JSS and yeah. earlier this season. Um, and I think for once, The Walking Dead took a positive approach to mercy and uh, kindness or, or you know, the opposite of rage and murder. Yeah. Uh, and usually it's met with um, a big mistake, like when Tyrese refused to kill someone and that ended up being a major problem for everyone else. Um, I'm not sure if Morgan is going to get off scot-free with that decision, leaving the wolf at the end alive, because it, by all accounts, that man is better off dead, given yeah. what he said his credo is. And with a is. toothbrush. And with a nice toothbrush and <laughs> floss. <laughs> so, Dental hygiene, folks. Yeah. I feel like this episode, it was like, you go on, you're going to go on this nice road trip, and then someone suggests that you stop off somewhere else, and it, it, when someone suggests that, you're like, no, we're going one place, <laughs> let's just go. So in that place, obviously, When was, are we going to get to the fireworks yeah. factory? <laughs> that was when we were, going, <laughs> we were going to figure out what was going on with Glenn. So immediately... Uh, I tweeted out saying I was never going to be really satisfied, but it was actually quite a pleasant detour. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. And the way I described it was, it's not the episode we wanted, but it is the episode we needed. Needed to find out what was going on. Now, it was a sequel to season three episode Clear. Mm -hmm. That was basically what this was. The episode where Rick uh, came back and seen Morgan in his psychotic state. This is a follow-up to that because you, you're starting to understand. We are introduced to him mid-Rambo psychotic stages I said in the middle of the jungle just mm -hmm. killing people or in the middle of the forest sorry not the jungle but killing people uh, relentlessly and we have to try and understand where we know where it's come from but how does he get back to the stage like how do we suddenly get this Jedi who's at peace with other thing and that's what I, I feel we needed I don't know if we needed it at this moment but they had to introduce it at one point. Only, only time will tell whether or not the placement of this episode was really as bad as it seems mm -hmm. Um, or it was absolutely necessary for what comes next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think, on the whole, I will say that this was a good episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's some of the best writing of the, definitely season, if not series. Best and, acting. And for sure, some of the best acting mm -hmm. from uh, from Lenny James and John Carroll Lynch. Yeah. John but Carroll both Lynch did a great job Knocked with it out of the park. I, yeah. I, Usually I, he plays, like on American Horror Story, he plays like, Psychos. He played a psycho in Zodiac as well. I remember he was in Zodiac. Which is probably why that bug was in my head that he was going to be the psycho Flip, right. that we find out at the end. Ah, clever I, casting. I, the way it worked out was fine. I, well, I did like that we, we were slowly, his, his journey was slowly revealed to us. Um, the uh, Crichton Dallas Wilton uh, subplot and yeah. how that happened and then Morgan watching him. It reminded me a bit of when Morgan was watching Rick, uh, which is like he's watching his friend, by all accounts, a good man, mm -hmm. a heroic man. Maybe Rick's not the hero that Morgan thinks he is, yeah. uh, but watching them unravel and then his sadness as a result of that. But the same thing, like, that is a good approach to think about, right? As a, as a fan of the show, you want to believe in the greater good and that peace will eventually come to. But we consistently are given no evidence that it will come to. Morgan has survived at this point, right? And he's, he's returned to his good state. We will only find out in time whether or not the wolf that he's saved undoubtedly will probably come back and bite him right in the ass. But mm -hmm. we see Eastman, who is taking this approach, is dead. Like, he... he He's in the stupidest way. In the stupidest oh, way. That was the one terrible part of this episode. <laughs> yeah, of course. You have a guy there. He's armed with his weapon of choice. He's got plenty of time. He should easily have dispatched that walker, but instead, 
And gets and that's pissed. That's well, because he's reminded of his past aggression and yeah, yeah, I guess. I just that that yes, was the yes, one moment that great. stuck out trying. so hard in an otherwise really well written episode. Yeah, and it was inevitable that it was going to happen as soon as that friendship started to to form. I did start to think your way because of I seen him in Zodiac and he gave off this somewhat pleasant vibe and then was psychotic. Um, and I was thinking, okay, he might turn. He might just be using Morgan as a way to to keep himself occupied in this world, oh, or? I, I believe that he felt his code, yeah. that, that he didn't really want to kill. I just didn't know what his real backstory was, yeah, exactly. which side of that story he was actually on. But that was a red herring. But I did like that it was, a, it was a unique turn that you expected his family to have died uh, as a result of the post-apocalyptic world that we're in, but it didn't, and it happened way before. He just That's, happened, he yeah. happened to channel his, his thoughts and his aggressions through this world and actually help him come out on the better side of it, because if this, world didn't happen, he would be in jail probably because he took the criminal away and uh, and basically tortured him. So his life would not be the way it is there. So that world kind of helped him. He's kind of got that Daryl side to it where he's coming out on the better end from what we see. I think Glenn had that too. Yeah. Uh, but it was interesting to see that Eastman's crisis happened before the world yeah. fell apart, before everything changed. And I don't know if that means that his code can actually work in any other circumstance. So yeah. I think that's the setup for the whole season. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we've been told time and time again that Rick's rationale, Rick's code is correct. That you, ha you can't take any chances, shoot first, mm -hmm. like, d you know, look out for you, strong survive, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And now we get the other side of that coin. Initially, audiences didn't react well to Morgan's new, you know, non-violence, peaceful, oh, I was give everyone them. a chance credo. I like it now, though. Uh, well, I mean, we haven't seen a, that bite him in the house a whole lot. Yes, that one wolf had a gun. Yes, it put Rick in a precarious situation. But so far, really, nobody has died because of it. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to see that change. We're going to see this you know, non-violent philosophy that works well in the woods when you only encounter one walker at a time and, you know, nobody else. Yeah. But when you put that in the real world, does it hold up? And will Morgan learn that yeah. one way or the other? So we have a couple of these storylines somewhat running cohesively together, right? So we, we don't really know. I don't want to go back to it again and have that discussion. But we have a similar situation with Glenn, right? Will this come back and bite him on the ass that he's given Nicholas another chance? From what we've seen in that episode, it did. He took a rash action and basically killed himself, putting Glenn's life in jeopardy. Whether that is going to come full fold, we don't know. So that storyline is running alongside what we're seeing with Morgan. I think that will all come full circle. Ideally, what you would want to think for the greater good is that Nicholas oh, didn't kill himself and he actually took a good decision. I really it was hope a vision. some redemption here. Maybe Morgan, the guy who's the wolf, something happens oh, where it, it ends up with the truce. But we all know that's not what's going to happen because Rick <laughs> is taking truce. all these things. <laughs> the guy, the wolf goes, all right. Trade me over and we'll leave. That's what ideally would want to happen. But no, he's going to kill someone. Rick is going to have to find out who was responsible for it and say one of his famous speeches that in this world you cannot react as rationally as you think you can it, based on what we've seen throughout every season. Every single person that's been given the slightest chance at redemption has come back to, to, to basically cause controversy no matter what and cause some problems. So I think eventually it has to, it has to work out for someone or else you're not really going anywhere. But... I just don't see it panning out in this example, especially with the wolf. It's hard to imagine logically that, that would work. Yes, uh, I, I know. would love to see it work for once, and for the show to finally veer off its path of Rick's way is the only way. And the, the, one of the reasons why I appreciated this episode so much was that mercy and peace were looked at um, in a positive light mm -hmm. for once, not like the sucker's route or the idiot idealist route. Yes, although there is a hint of that in there. It's mm. not like a Scott Free thing. Does the end of the episode undo that? where he you know, finishes the story, we see that the wolf is, you know, the person who's receiving the story, is being told about this tale of peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it has zero effect on him. He still says right to Morgan's face, I I'm going kill to kill you. Yeah. That's what I do. Those are the rules. I'm sorry, you're an idiot. Well, that's what he says, and it's supposed to be, obviously be a direct correlation with what Morgan said to Eastman, right? Because he said, I'm going to kill you. And he's like, no... No, you're not. He's like, I'm a clearer. I'm going to clear you. So maybe it's trying to run similar to that. We don't have enough time to see what. Do you his see Morgan regressing back to clear Morgan as opposed to redirect Morgan? You I, know, I having thought a break. The, I thought the key moment there was when he closes the door and then he thinks about it and then he locks it. Yeah. So he clearly hasn't fully adopted Eastman's philosophy because the cage is locked. Yes. The door is not open. You are stuck in there. I do not trust this. You know you know, motto, this credo, enough to leave you unattended. Mm -hmm. 
And then I guess that's what we got to touch on is that whose voice was it at the end? Shout Rex. Number. Was it Rex? That's for sure, Rex. You know, I, I, I read, Rex I read a bunch of reviews. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to double, I wanted to make sure it was Rick. I nah, just didn't know. Rick. Was I was Rick. like, is that Does his? Does it matter though? It could be. Well, if it's Rick, I mean, then... I guess from a symbology point of view, what Rick represents calling to Morgan. Sure. Yeah. Well, it could. I be... just think it was literally Rick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it is. But if it is Rick, and then he ha he's running back from conflict, from running into those guys who tried to attack his uh, caravan, or whatever he's in, is that not then a direct repercussion from Morgan letting someone go? Is that not what we're going to have yes, to face there, that right there? Yes, there for sure are repercussions. There's no way Rick could know that the wolves were armed because of Morgan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even think Morgan will find out that the guy that took the gun was the one that shot at Rick. I don't really see how that could be revealed in a yeah. way that's yeah. meaningful to all the characters. Yeah. Um, well, I guess next week we're going to see what happens next, hopefully with Glenn. I don't yeah, think that, so. I, I think I they're going to string us on They're going to string us on. They're going to keep stringing us on. But it, and it's a hearts. smart tactic. It's a smart tactic. To, to, I do. Is it? It's a smart tactic for the length of the it's show. A can, a smart can, at this for the point, can episode. you justify this episode, as good as it was, being right here? No, I don't think so. But I'm it not. It could have been in season there's many five. Things that it we, could have been two weeks from now. Yeah, there's many uh, things of what I'm talking about in terms of smart. Like it's the show has consistently ran on, and it's it was a good enough episode to to keep people entertained. But at the same time, you're still going to have so many people upset. What it has done though is it. It's given us the opportunity to sympathize with Morgan because I'm speaking in my own behalf and not that episode with Glenn, but the one before it. I was screaming at the TV, Morgan, why are you not just killing these people? Like, what are you doing? You're, it's so frustrating to watch. And Carol obviously is in the other end of the spectrum shooting people point blank dead. So it gave me the, the understanding of how he came to this resolution, but also set it up for another massive fail where someone is going to come back and basically undo everything that he has Built. It uh, has failed every other time. Yes, exactly. That's <laughs> in what I'm every saying. other example in the show. I don't think this is going to be a. But this time, but this, this time, one it's time. Gonna this is the one. This is yeah. the one. <laughs> and that's why they're doing it. They're building up the sympathy for him, so that like, okay, maybe he could do it. But then, uh, speaking as, on behalf of us, I'm sure as fans, we will quickly turn around and say, Nah, see, I, I know, told I knew ya. it wasn't going to work this time. I told you. you so. But then in your mind, you're thinking, All right, maybe one time it's going to work. Yeah. So, a, a good bottle episode, but we have our doubts. Yes. Yep, I think Absolutely. that wraps it up pretty succinctly. Uh, we'll see you next week for whatever the heck happens. We don't know. I swear to God, we got to find out what's happened to Glenn. <laughs>